good idea, go up, because, well, we are getting to relax besides the grind for the preparation for this evening. So, yeah, we're getting to meet a whole lot of people, and that's what I really like. I love meeting people, making friends, and, well, that's what it's all about. Oh, I'm having a great time. It's, it's super fun. Really nice. I'm Supriya, I'm from Chandigarh and I'm presently staying in Delhi. I'm doing fashion designing and it's being real fun here. Great fun in the beach. Lots of guys after you, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I come from the east of India, the exotic east. And I uh, happen to be a very fun-loving person. I love life. I love babies. I love chocolate. I love it all. Just name it, and I love it. I love balloons. <laughs> I'm a very extrovert person. I love meeting people. I love traveling around. And this is one opportunity I saw that could really help it out. Also, I think it's a great experience to meet so many different people from so many different parts of the country. It's so much more exciting and I think it's the most wonderful experience I've ever had to now. Yeah. and welcome to Feminine India 1994. It's great to be back with you all once again. But this time the venue has shifted from Bombay where the contest has been held for the past 29 years to Goa. And it's the tourist season in Goa these days. So it's great to be here, especially with the Feminine India contest. And extravaganza brought to you only on Star Plus. And to share the excitement of the contest with all of you, is my co-host for the evening, John Moorhead. Hi, Archana. The sun, the sea, clean, unspoiled beaches, and some of India's most beautiful women. It's been very exciting. Oh, yes. There's nothing quite like a Feminine Miss India contest, is there, John? Nope. And last year was exactly the same. And the winners did pretty well for themselves, didn't they? Oh, yes. Superlatively well. Namata Shirodka Miss India 1, 1993, stood fourth in the Miss Universe contest. Pooja Batra Miss India 3 was in the first 15. Uh, 12th, to be exact. All right, 12th to be more exact, in the Miss International contest. And Karminder Kaur, Miss India 2, launched a thousand sides in a naval revealing costume that bagged her the best costume award at the Miss World contest. Just imagine, John, the very same three women who but a year ago stood on the same stage, uncertain of their futures. Well, I wonder what surprises this year's contest will bring. By the way, Archana, where are the girls? They should have been here by now. <laughs> Patience, John, all in its own good time. Don't forget, the girls have had a very hectic four days. They've been touring, competing, vying for a number of crowns, sightseeing and what have you. But despite the atmosphere being charged with the spirit of competition, the girls have got along rather famously. In fact, this very morning they were asked to vote to decide who amongst them was the friendliest and most likable contestant of them all. at the Demania Airways Miss Congeniality Contest. A contest with a difference because there are no judges. Each one of the girls is a judge herself. And today, they're going to give points to each other on how likable they are. So, needless to say, the one with the highest score will become Miss Congeniality. The winner of the 
Damania Airways Miss Congeniality Contest is Manini. Crowning her is Miss Ratna Cancharella, Miss India USA. Well, that was a great event. There was no bitching or fighting at all. And as a newsreader would put it, there was 100% turnout and the polling was fair and peaceful. <laughs> Yes, but now the countdown begins for the Feminine Miss India 1994. But before that, we have a little time off for a short break. Stay tuned, we'll be back. Of 1994, which for the first time in its 29-year-old history is being held in Goa, India's beach paradise. Femina, for about three decades, has always provided a forum for Indian women from all over India to come together and to compete for the Femina Miss India title. So in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, you will meet 24 outstanding young ladies from all over India, whom I'm sure you will agree deserve this very special night. After which, three will be chosen as the Femina Miss, Miss, sorry, as the Femina Miss Indias 1994. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you our finalists who will take the stage in leatherwear by Namaste Export. <laughs> them closely, one of these girls will win a special prize as the best catwalk model, the Namaste Catwalk Queen. And at the end of this evening, three of them will be wearing crowns as Femina Miss India's 1994.
Well, that was very professional. Oh, yes, but there's much more to the Indian woman than just fashion and glamour. Which brings me to the ever-changing, multifaceted Indian woman. Traditional, trendy, humane, competent and full of spirit. And Femina, for the past 29 years, has been organizing the Miss India contest to show her every mood, her every accomplishment. From glamour to grit and professionalism that goes way beyond the call of duty, Femina praises every aspect of the woman achiever and gives away a very special award for the very special woman. So we have a very special event, the presentation of the Femina Woman of Substance Award 1994. With pride and joy, Femina presents the Woman of Substance 1994. A woman who relentlessly investigated and unraveled for us the bank scam. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sucheta Dalai. And to present this award is our special guest this evening, the erstwhile chief of the Indian Army, Goa's very own General S.F. Roberts. Time again, and let's welcome our co-host for this evening, an ex-beauty queen herself, who is very much in the picture every week on Star Plus. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Kamal Sidhu. You're looking lovely, Kamal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely wonderful to be here tonight and go. I mean, look at this audience. Distinguished or what? I know it's a lovely audience. They've been clapping for everything, and I think we're going to have a great time. I think it's going to be full of excitement. I mean, have you ever seen him looking so good? <laughs> Doubtful. Okay, let's get this show on the road. First of all, this is a personality contest. And while Khalif and Kamal take count. you through That's the show, question. let me introduce you to our panel of judges for this evening. Ambassador of Finland to India, Her Excellency Miss Mariata Rassi. Erstwhile editor of Femina, Miss Vimla Patil. The quintessential lover boy of the Indian screen, the heartbreaker, Mr. Rishi Kapoor. Three times World Amateur Billiards Champion, Mr. Michael Pereira. Haute Couture Designer, Miss Ritu Kumar. Miss Bani Ganpati. Bharat Natyam, her first love, she also has a flair for costume designing. Bureaucrat come author, Mr. Okmanu Chatterjee. Champion of Champions, Mr. Ravi Shastri. Everyone's favorite water baby, India's swimming champ, actress, designer, committed environmentalist, Miss Nafisa Ali. And now a quick look at the rules. The contest will feature four rounds. Round one will present all the 24 contestants. 16 of these will go through to round two. Round three will then see nine winners out of the 16, and the fourth round will bring forth the last five, out of whom will be chosen the three winners. Miss India 3, who will go on to represent India at the Miss International, Miss India 2, who goes to the Miss World Contest, and the top scorer, Miss India 1, will represent India at the Miss Universe 1994. And now it's over to our stage host to detail out the most crucial element of all, the scoring process. Now that's the boring part, but just stick with us for a little while, okay? Now, in each round, the contestants will be evaluated out of 10 points. And as for international practice, the average scores of each contestant will be evaluated by eliminating the highest and lowest scores after eliminating, um, sorry, obtained by her to remove any element of bias that may occur. That's right, and uh, the average scores of each contestant will then be ranked by the computer in descending order for the next round. Now, in case of a tie, which means if two girls buy for the last position to the next round, the mark scored in the, in the Kelvinator Miss 10 contest will be used as the tiebreaker. But um, suppose they tie in the Kelvinator contest as well. Haven't you heard of the law and probability? No. It's quite unlikely, but if that does happen, in that case, Femina will exercise its casting vote, except in the final round where the judging will have to be redone. 
So, that was the scoring process our august panel of judges will follow this evening. But now it's time for round one. Here come the stars. Shalini, or Shalu, is five foot seven inches tall and is fond of fashion, interior designing, swimming, and reading. Her greatest achievement, she thinks, is the day she learned to stand on her feet. Some achievement. Contestant number two is Namrata. Namrata is five foot six inches tall. She's a final year political science student and wishes to do her MBA. Her special talents are painting, sketching, and photography. And she has a great interest in dancing and in music. For some odd reason, it's called Jimmy at home. It's five foot five inches tall. She sings her own praises and writes poetry to her boyfriend. And watch it, folks. Her hobby may frighten you a little. She loves analyzing people. Contestant number four is Anita. She is five foot eight inches tall. Is into fashion designing and babysitting. Anita loves sports, crafts, painting, and traveling. Yeah. Mandini or Aman's talents are as impressive as her five foot eight and a half inches frame. An MBA student, she's into music, modeling, outdoor games, riding, and dancing. And she can cook up a tasty temptation in the kitchen as well. Contestant number six is Priya. Her hobby is run to the exotic. Skiing, horse riding, swimming, trekking. She is five foot, five inches tall. And she takes pride in the fact that she's a star maker. A young tuition student passed with a distinction. Ten inches tall, her tastes run into flowers and books, drafting and music, and also some fast tennis. She's courting the feminine Miss India title today because she hopes to add another crown to her list of trophies. Let's get steady, let's get high, baby. Try and figure me out. You bet you will. I'm a real knockout. Contestant number eight, Janice. Janice, oh baby. All of uh, five foot eight inches is light on her feet. And when she's not dancing, she likes to travel to broaden her views and her mind. The feet, five foot ten and a half inches tall, is Sweetie and Jessie to others. She loves swimming, athletics, and reading by day, and making music and driving by night. This high flyer also holds a pilot license. Number 10, Shilpi. Shilpi is 5 foot 8 inches tall and knows her mind. She hopes to be an air hostess. Badminton, elocution, basketball, and poetry are a hobby. Also, art reproduction. has taken ill and has consequently opted out of the contest. Contestant number 12 then, Barkha. Barkha is 5 foot 8 inches tall and says she has hit the high point in her life by making it to the Femina Miss India final. Number 
number 13, although lucky was, for some was not a lot at this time around. Contestant number 14, her name is Simran. Simran, or Sim Sim, as she is referred to, is five foot, five and a half inches tall. She's studying English, and she admires the old bard, Shakespeare, and enjoys playing the odd round of golf. Nishi, five foot five and a half inches tall, loves traveling. She's in college and models for a hobby. Dancing, swimming, aerobics, keep her fit, and the future includes fashion designing and starting her own magazine. Contestant number 16 is Shweta. Shweta is five foot seven and a half inches tall and wants to be a model. She loves singing, dancing, reading and listening to music. She also performs the part of nothing. Contestant number 17, Meru or Meher is five foot five inches tall, loves Hindi songs and is a good athlete. Her greatest achievement is still to come. Will it happen today? Contestant number 18 lost her nerve and opted out at the last moment. I can't say I blame her, I almost did the same myself. Contestant number 19, Kamalji, five foot eight and a half inches tall, loves lots of traveling, shops and people. Little wonder her friends call her Kame. Contestant number 20, Farhana. Farhana is five foot six inches tall, and she appeared in her school production of The King and I. She wishes to take off into her own as an air hostess. Meanwhile, modeling is what she's into these days. Contestant number 21, Aishwarya or Ash, five foot seven inches tall. A blow hot. Cold. Has I foundations in architecture, cold. but her feet are well on the ramp thanks to a changed. career in modeling. Consistent number 22, Komal. Komal is five foot seven and a half inches tall. She plays squash and loves music and the Bharat Natya. Contestant number 23. Rupa or Rinku to her friends is five foot six and a half inches tall. She loves being popular and enjoys folk dancing. Contestant number 24 is Kajal. Kajal or Kaj is five foot six inches tall, loves her A, D and M. In other words, aerobics. Dancing and music. Contestant number 25. Shushmita, for some reason, is called Titan and Titu by her friends. She, at five and a eight, sorry, five eight inches tall, she's writing, singing, dancing, and music. Her early successes in modeling are her greatest achievements so far. Number 26 is Shanmati. She's a law student. She's five foot six inches tall. She's into films. Juggling time between academics and films, she feels, is her greatest achievement. Adventure sports, swimming, painting, and advertising are her strengths. Contestant number 27. Kimmy, called Kim, is five foot eight inches tall and is into singing and the pangra. 
She's done a role in a film at 15 and loves swimming, photography, music, and athletics. And there we have 24 of India's most beautiful girls vying for the Femina Miss India Crown 1994. Let's give them a big hand, a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Stop looking so dazed, John. I've never seen so many good-looking women. <laughs> so I figured. And can you believe it? Most of them are not even professional models. Which leads me to the contest that was held earlier to judge who would win the Namaste Exports Miss Catwalk crown based on the leather wear round. The winner is Aishwarya Rai. Namaste Exports Miss Catwalk crown was judged by Karan Kapoor, Anna Bredmeyer, Rafiq Sayyad. She was crowned by the beautiful choreographer and model, Lubna Adams. But for now, the contestants have disappeared into the wings. We'll be right back with you after the break. The forefront of world entertainment, spanning 53 countries Asia-wide. This is the Star TV Network. You've got the whole world in your hands with MasterCard in your hands. You've got a brighter future in your hands to do the things you've always planned with MasterCard in your hands. In more doors and more places than ever before with MasterCard. Welcome back, and before we go on to round two, it's time for some entertainment from Goa's own musical sensation, the Indian performer who's made golden and platinum history with pop songs in English, the one and only Remo Fernandez. Land, you understand, surrounded by myth and mystery, with the highest mountains, the clearest fountains, when mystical men make their sanctuary. She has jungles of green and rivers of blue. Tigers and peacocks and elephants do If you come to her with a heart that's true She'll have a garland of flowers to welcome you
then or there, always leaving you asking for more. If it wasn't for the poor girls, I would have asked them to continue. Yes, but meanwhile, the contestants burned with anticipation. In round one, the focus was on fitness, perfect proportions and muscle tone. But wasn't that the first time swimwear was worn on an Indian stage? Oh, yes, and with great confidence, you must admit. In fact, on the 13th of January, the girls vied for the Calvinator Miss Ten crown in swimwear. Calvinator Miss Ten is Aishwarya Rai, the coolest one of them all. Crowning her is model Lisa Ray. Here are 16 lucky, beautiful, talented young women who will now compete to make it to round three of the contest. Contestant number one, Shalini. Contestant number four, Anita. Contestant number five, Mani.
absent number seven, Francesca. Just me. Contestant number 12, Barca. Contestant number 14, Simran. Contestant number 16, Shweta. Farhana. Contestant number twenty one, Aishwarya. Contestant number 27, Kimmy. round two. In this round, each of the 16 contestants will pick a question out of the bow. Here with me right now is an ex-feminine Miss India and top-ranking model, Suzanne Sablok Pillay, and she's going to let us in on some very acute observations. Suzanne, you've been watching the girls pretty closely on and off stage. Who do you think has what it takes to be a winner? Well, right now, I wouldn't want to be where the judges are because I think they have a very tough decision ahead mm -hmm. of them. But uh, a girl that will be the winner will definitely be a girl who is, has poised, confident, uh, is um, beautiful, but most important, intelligent. It says, what would you do if you were among the last to leave your office and you find yourself stuck in the elevator of a skyscraper? Would you like to hear that question again? No. Would you like to answer it? Me and my boyfriend have a telepathy, so he would know that I'm stuck there and he'd come to my rescue. Ah. What is this? 
the same. Between success and failure, what do you find more difficult to cope with and why? Between success and failure, what do you find more difficult to cope with and why? I think it will be failure, of course, and I know that uh, failure is a stepping stone to success, but still it will probably make me, I mean, <laughs> discourage me or something. Well, she was trying to say that failure is a pillar to success. <laughs> Manmeen, please uh, select your question. Would you like to read it first or should I read it first? Okay, I'll read it. And the question to Manveen is, um, if you were elected as the Prime Minister of India, what is the first thing that you will correct and why? The bank scam. I think we all know the reason why we need to correct it. Yeah, that's what I would do if I would become the Prime Minister of India. I would correct the bank scam. Any questions? Would like to ask a question? Would you like to read it or should I? First. Okay. These things are a little uh, difficult to maneuver. If you could change your face to look like someone else in the world, who will it be and why? I don't think she needs to change her face at all. I don't want to change my, uh, my face. I'm happy as I am. And I thank God for it. Thank you. How would you react? How would you react if someone close to you were to tell you that beauty contests were demeaning and insulting to women? Would you like to answer that? Sh shall I repeat the question? How would you react if someone close to you were to tell you that beauty contests were demeaning and insulting to women? Hello. If that was the case, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have entered this contest. But because I have the guts and the ability to do, to do so, I've entered here and I'm here today. Would you like to select your question, just please? Yes, I'll read it to you. If you could transform yourself into an animal for a day, what would you like to be and why? I would like to be a dog because uh, he's always loyal. Okay, it's your turn. Select a question. Thank you. And the, sel and the question that Varka has selected seems to be a really long one. Because it goes on. Imagine that the devil comes up to you and promises you to promises to give you the Femina Miss India title. In exchange, you will have to sacrifice or give up something that is very important to you. He will give you the title only if he likes what you offer. What will it be? How about that? <laughs> I have to repeat this for It's a really long one. It says, imagine that the devil comes up to you and promises to give you the Femina Miss India title. That he promises to you. In exchange, you've got to give him something. You've got to sacrifice something that's very important to you. And only then will he give you... Uh, the Miss uh, Femina title, what would you offer him and why? I would like to win this title on my abilities and my assets. But just in case somebody's offering me the title, I would like to win this title on my abilities and my assets. 
just in case somebody is willing to offer me something. <laughs> no, he's offering me. Right. I guess um, I'll give him my best smile. <laughs> question but uh, might not be easy chivalry is an outdated concept what are your views chivalry I don't think chivalry is an outdated concept because the day chivalry goes out I think men will go out of concept too oh, well said. <laughs> do you want to read it first she wants to read her own question. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll read it. Okay. Name three most important things that being Indian means to you. Name the three most important things that being Indian means to you. Well, um, three most important things that being Indian means to me is... Uh, okay. Mm, I guess um, Indian women are very conservative and they just love for it outside. Um, everywhere. That's one of the most important things. The other thing Indian is I have black hair and have good complexion. I guess all Indians have that. And um, louder? Okay, and the third thing that being Indian um, is the is that um, the love for our parents and the respect for our parents that we have. I think um, we all always treasure that. Next question, and when I give you the microphone, if I remember, hold it close to your, to your mouth and speak loudly. This is a question to switch to uh, uh, Shweta. If you become Femina Miss India, and then went on to become Miss Universe, Miss World, or Miss International, what is the first thing you will do, and why? Well, Dali. First of all, let me tell, good evening all of you. Well, when I become Miss India, and further on Miss Universe, and Miss World, and Miss Un International, or whatever, well, first thing, I'll come back to my country, and I'll be very proud. I'll be the greatest person. I'll, I'll be very proud to be the ambassador of my country, and would like to improve the children of our country, the, the future of their because they are the tomorrow of us. They are the future of our country. And, well, of course, I'll be very proud of being Miss Universe, Miss International. Beautiful. Peru, would you like to select your question? They're being asked questions and I'm getting nervous. I don't believe this. Um, question to Meru. If uh, two men, one rich and, and uh, witty. Yes, it is witty. If two men, one rich and witty, the other handsome and genius were to propose to you, which one would you choose and why? One is rich and, and funny, witty. The other is handsome and he's a genius. I don't think those two go together, do they? Um, uh, and they propose to you. I mean, which one would you choose and why? Well, I would choose the person who is rich and witty because um, a man cannot stay handsome forever. <laughs> Also because um, you like, uh, I love money <laughs> and <laughs> I can't stay without it. <laughs> Farhana, your question. And this is a question to Farhana. 
how would you react if you discovered that your husband is being unfaithful to you? Divorce him? Kick him? Sorry, that's not there. <laughs> how would you react if your husband is being, faithful, uh, being unfaithful to you? Sorry. Uh, divorce him? Confront him? Or do something else? Well, I would confront him and uh, probably if there's another woman in his life, then uh, probably I would look into myself and try improving myself, fine? Uh, but I definitely confront him before going to the other woman. Ashwarya, your question. Should I read it for you? Okay, this is a question to Ashwarya. Einstein, Shakespeare and Mahatma Gandhi, whose contribution to the world do you think was the most important and why? Einstein, Shakespeare, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, to be very honest, because he taught us the spirit of non-violence, which is essential which was essential yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. okay. Komal, this is the question to you. If you become an absolute ruler, means you're the boss, you do anything you want. Of any country in the world, which country other than India would you choose, and why? I guess Bangladesh because I have a lot of Bangladeshi friends and uh, we have a similar culture and tradition and uh, what I'd like to change is maybe do something about the floods in Bangladesh. Shushmita, your question. Thank you. Sushmita, this is for you. If you have some secret information that tomorrow is the end of the world, what will you do today and why? If I got to know that tomorrow was going to be the end of the world, I'd live today to the best I can, for the best that I can do today. I'd make the best that I can do today and not as it is. I don't think anybody should live for tomorrow. Everybody should live for today. Question for me. The last one. And the question to Kimmy is, um, women are exploited in advertising. What are your views? I don't think they are exploited in advertising because nobody can force women to do anything. They can do whatever they want. And nobody can force them. If a woman wants to be exploited, she can be. Otherwise, she can lead a very self-respected life. how much talent and intellect is packed into some of these lovely women. Archana, you should tell the viewers about the wild time these girls have been having these past few days. Yes, despite the fact that they had to go from contest to contest. We've seen three already. And the fourth one was to decide who would wear the sun silk Miss Beautiful Hair Crown. Everywhere. So here I am at the Go and Nugget at the Sun Silk Miss Beautiful Hair Contest. And everybody, I mean everybody's asking who has the most beautiful hair, and it's not me. It's a wild evening, a lot of fun. 
while the girls win some and lose some here at the games parlor, our judges will allow them to let their hair down as they make notes to find out who will be the most beautiful Rapunzel of them all. And I can tell you, looking at the girls where I am, it's going to be a tough decision. Silk Miss Beautiful Hair is Miss Kimi Verma. And to crown her, we have Miss Ruby Bhatia, Miss India Canada. Kimi Verma, the Sun Silk Miss Beautiful Hair. as entertainment continues with one of the most spectacular dancers of all time. He's danced all over the world, even on the Great Wall of China. The high-flying, world-class Astar Babu.
was a fusion of class and style but now it's time to move on to round three with the finest nine and here they come okay contestant number four anita contestant number seven francesca Number nine, just me. Contestant number fourteen, Simran. Contestant number 17, Meru. Number 21, Aishwarya. And contestant number 25, Shushmita. This round, each of the nine contestants will pick a name of a judge out of a bowl at random. That judge will then ask the contestant a question. Looks and boys will count too, but answers to the questions will decide which of these girls will make it to round four. My new strategy. What are your views on the status or position of the English language in India today? Well, in India today, English has very importance being the second language in India, but still people prefer to talk in English. I think it's become a status among all the people, and, but I think I still value Hindi as the national language. Thank you. Hello? Rishi Kapoor, sorry. <laughs> An innocent mistake, of course. Anita, my question to you is in good humor. I don't want to be wicked. Don't misunderstand me. What would you do if someone made an indecent proposal to you? 
if it was coming from a decent man like you, why not? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Kapoor, I'm sure you like that one. <laughs> Maharaja Ka Rasi, if in your capacity of Miss Universe or Miss World, you may have an opportunity to visit my country, Finland, what would be the, your message to the people of Finland? Well, I'd say that I've learned a lot about it in geography and it's supposed to be a wow place. It seems the people are very fr friendly and warm and uh, I think it's a gorgeous place. I would love to be there and tell all the people that I love them and I would love to come there sometime and be with them all. Thank you. Ravi Shastri. Sushmita, if I may, who, in your opinion, has been the most deserving Miss India you know, and why, and how would you rate against her? How would I rate? Against her. Well, I really feel it would be very partial to take one person's name, because whoever has been Miss India till date, have been all very nice. Thank you very much. Lumla Patel, I want you to name three strategies which an Indian woman needs in the 90s to be a winner. Three strategies, not qualities. Well, I think it's confidence, patience, uh, and beauty. Michael Ferreira. There are some who believe that the explosion of TV networks from abroad is affecting traditional Indian values. What do you feel? I still am the way I have always been, following our Indian traditional values. I haven't seen it lacking in this entire period of stay with the rest of the contestants in this um, contest held this year. So I am not quite sure I agree with that view. Thank you. Vani Ganpati. Vani Ganpati. Who do you think is responsible for the present degeneration in our society? The voter, the businessman, the bureaucrat, or the politician? Well, it's not just one person who is responsible for demoralizing our society. It's just a handful of persons from maybe all the factors which are responsible. Ms. Nafiza Ali, the environment is a major issue today. If you were given the power, how would you help India? For example, take how would we save the trees? I'd say each one plant one and I'd like to start off a campa campaign on those lines so that every person decides to plant one tree starting off from his own garden and covering the whole country. Ritu Kumar, if Satiji Dre was alive today and he offered you a role in one of his films, at the same time, you got two other offers. One from a producer in Bombay, let's say Mahesh Dutt or Ramesh Sippi, and another one from the James Ivory team. Which would your preference be? My preference would be Sachajit Ray because I think he's one of the best. And uh, I mean, he was one of the best and will always be. His movies have always been brilliant. Thank you.
stay with us for the results of round three. We'll be back after the break. She's sultry, full of panache. Her voice can cause a thousand heartbreaks. She's here to regale this very special show, ladies and gentlemen, the swinging, singing sensation, Shweta Shetty. Stay with us for the Femina Miss India Contest 1994. We'll be back after the break. I have beautiful hair. But do you know, I want... to the Femina Miss India 1994. It's been five beautiful days here in Goa. But for the girls, it's not just been relaxation all the way, has it, John? No, let's not forget the hard work they put into the Goa Renaissance Miss Photogenic Crown.
Renaissance Resort, Miss Photogenic Contest was judged by photographers Sheena Sippy, Dainita Singh, and Sumiko Murgai. Ashvarya Rai. Ashvarya Rai was also the Miss Ten and now Miss Photogenic. Crowning her at this fun-filled beach party is actress Shilpa Shirodka. up now john isn't it yep. there's so much excitement you can almost cut the atmosphere with a knife we're down to five girls so let's go over to dalip and kamal to see how things are going winners of round three are just waiting to be announced and here they are francesca just me shweta Aishwarya. Question round. All five contestants will be given the same question and they have a whole minute to answer. But the single question must be answered in full. No yes sirs, no sirs. The answers will decide the standings in the finals. Okay, the question is. The question is. Ready? If you could miraculously change the course of one important historic event, which one will it be and why? clock is ticking away, we have time to meet film actress Sangeeta Bijlani, who is an ex feminine Miss India herself. Hi, Sangeeta. Hi, Ajay. Sangeeta, all things being equal, this is the one question that could make or break the chances of these girls. What do you think the girls are feeling right now? Well, it really must be a flight of heart versus head. While the heart flushes with sheer confusion, the head must be computing for the best answer. <laughs> Believe me. It is no joke going through this last round. It takes wit, willpower, control, and a dash of luck to hit upon the right answer. But those girls, they have it all. So may the best girl win. Okay, contestant number one, Francesca. 
I would like to change the course of the World War I and also the first war before that. God knows when it was held. So that there would be complete peace and happiness on the earth. Thank you. Contestant number nine, just me. Well, it's a bit same. I would have changed the First World War into peace. As the peace is the most important in my view, and this war was the beginning of violence. Thank you. Contestant number 16, Shweta. Indira Gandhi's death, because she was the most powerful and able person for our country, and she was our leader, Prime Minister. So. Thank you, Shweta. Contestant number 21, Ashwarya. The historic event I'd have changed the course of, my birth. Because I wish I were born earlier, so that I know that I would have been a leader of sorts and have definitely prevented the wars of this world. Thank you. Thank you. Contestant number 25, Shushmita. Well, I have something similar to say as Shweta. I would like to change the assassination of Mrs. Indra Gandhi because she was one lady who changed the entire history of the status of a woman with great, great dignity, grace and power. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. This is very good answers. Very quick thinking, guys. Interesting answers to interesting questions, right? Yes, very interesting, John. But before we hear what the judges have to say, we'll take a short break and we'll be back. Welcome back to the Femina Miss India Contest 1994. And as we await the judges' decision, please welcome on stage the three last year's winners. Pooja Batra, Miss India 3, Karninder Kaur, Miss India 2, and Namrata Shirodkar, Miss India 1. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a big hand! Beautiful Miss Indian 1993 Namrita Shirodka, who's about to abdicate her crown, but who's going to take it? It's all very exciting, isn't it, John? This is the moment we've all been waiting for, so let's go where the action is. Ladies and gentlemen, the results of the Femina Miss India contest 1994. And for the first time in the 29-year history of the Femina Miss India contest, ladies and gentlemen, there is a tie. Well, according to the rules, judges will now have to reevaluate the contestants all over again. Any five of the judges can ask a question to each of the five girls. So let's see who the five judges are and what they ask. Tension is now at its peak as once again all five have a fresh chance. 21, Aishwarya. Aishwarya, I'm sure all of you watch the soap operas, the English soap operas on star tv if you have to look for qualities in a husband would you look for the qualities in rich in bold and beautiful or mason in santa barbara <laughs> and why <laughs> qualities I'd look for in a man between the two characters that you've given to me would be in Mason. Though they do share a lot in common, from what we get to see, Mason does have a very caring side to him and a terrific sense of humor. And that really gels with my character. Thank you. Contestant number nine, just me. We have often heard that India has many cultural values to offer the world. Exactly what does this statement 
mean to you, if it means anything at all? Well, sir, yes. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. I will summon, uh, summon it up in one sentence. That's unity and diversity. Thank you. Contestant number 25, Shushmita. Uh, my question to you is, uh, what do you know about the textile heritage of your country? How old has it been? And what do you prefer to wear personally? In your, and what does your wardrobe look like? Could I answer your questions in section? Please. <laughs> yeah, so the first question was, how much do I know about the textile industry in India? Textile heritage of this country. Heritage. Well, I think it started off with Mahatma Gandhi's Khadi and uh, it's, done a, it's gone a long way since then. And, but the basics of the textile heritage lies in there. And uh, what was your second question? My second question is, what does your wardrobe look like? I wouldn't say it's Khadi, <laughs> but uh, yes, it's a mixture of a lot of tradition. I love wearing it ethnic outfits, Indian traditional outfits, because I personally feel I can carry them off very well. But otherwise, I do have a lot of Western outfits. That's what it consists of. Thank you, Thank you very much. Contestant number 16, Shweta. Recently, there was a, the case of Shabana Azmi planting a kiss on the cheek of Nelson Mandela. Some people were outraged. Some people felt it was a storm in a teacup. What do you feel? I think the whole issue was exaggerated a lot. I think it was just a part of a gesture. And I think it is accepted by everybody. Everybody, whenever meets anybody, is uh, welcomed with a gesture in a different kind. I think that was the only thing. I think it was very exaggerated. Thank you. Number seven, Francesca. If you were Minister for Tourism, how would you promote India? India is a beautiful country. And I feel it is not getting enough of advertisement abroad. People don't know much about the beauty of India. So I would first of all advertise the places, the various places in India. And try to attract the tourists so that we would have more people from abroad coming to India getting to know the heritage of our country and learning to enjoy what all life is about in our country, India. Ladies and gentlemen, of the Femina Miss India three title is Francesca Hart.
Scott. Of the Miss India. 1994 Femina title is... 1994 Femina title is... You do it. Miss Shusmita Sen. <laughs> Gentlemen, the Miss India 1, Miss India 2, and Miss India 3, 1994. Aren't they lovely? Let's give them a big hand.